Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Rabbids Party of Legends on the Nintendo Switch. Now if the name didn't give it away this one it's a party game experience, but is it worth your cash with competition like Mario Party out there already? Well that's what I'm here to find out so hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. Story then, and yes, this features what it calls adventure mode. Now, the idea here, opening the game, the rabbits they are watching a tale around a journey to the West and the Monkey King. This quickly covers his imprisonment, freedom, allies, battles, and eventual god status. While watching this, though, they just happen to be relaxing in a washing machine. In typical Rabbids fashion though, this washing machine it gets activated, it's not your usual cycle, instead it transports you, or should I say comes crashing down in this world of gods. That crash landing though it causes mayhem, most notably sacred books they are scattered to the land of the living. Now they take your machine and task you with collecting all of these books back up so you can get back home. Along the way then it's going to further this plot between four acts and will introduce a number of cast members as well. That said many of these are purely in text and not actually seen. It's decent enough and it's definitely a nice addition for the genre, plus the characters they are as likeable as ever. Rabbids Party of Legends and it originally released back in 2019 as a Chinese exclusive. It was near impossible to play here, not only because it had no English support, but also it was hardware locked, meaning you needed the Chinese Tencent Nintendo Switch console. Well now we finally get a release and while I'm not sure it's out to reinvent the genre, I'd call it a decent enough entry. So the gameplay support sent up to four players and we see three modes packed in here. That's adventure which is a story mode as you tackle the four mentioned acts and then party mode that includes quick play as well as customization. That adventure mode I'm going to say it lasts near three hours so it's a decent little chunk of content but it's party mode that's been designed to keep you coming back. Quick play it allows you to select a 5, 10, 15 or 30 minute game with random offense while custom you instead choose a playlist of your favorite mini games and the way you go. It's also then reinforced with a leveling up system, the more you play the more points you are awarded and this will then reward you with unlockable playable characters and there is 45 in total. You start the game in the region of kind of 20. You'll also then gain unlocks for replaying adventure mode but for me personally gotta say it once was definitely enough. You can also play all modes in solo or team up, so basically some of the mini games they are 2 versus 2 and you can either randomise your teammate and compete in the solo offence together as a team as well or go free for all and then randomly see a partner assigned. Both of these modes are essentially one mini game after another as you get awarded points and they eventually crown a victor. Gotta be honest here, I miss having a board Mario Party style and I really think it would have benefited from it. It subdues the burnout of the gameplay in my opinion. Mini games wise then, it's a decent selection, 50 packed in, but I do challenge the validity of that statement honestly because when you first boot up the game you're restricted to around 30, you need to level up to unlock the rest. It's not just that though, but a lot of them are actually doubles but with a different background. A rhythm one for example actually accounts for around six stages in here because the location of the music track it has been changed, so according to the game that is enough to consider it a completely new level. Gameplay wise though for the minigames it's focused really on utilising motion and standard play as well and I did enjoy quite a few of them, particular highlights, battling your opponents off a crumbling platform or running from ghosts even though again if you listen to that by design they are very similar and that's what I was noticing a lot, there's a slight tweak on many of them so the game can try to introduce it as something new but you're going to really see through it pretty quickly. I particularly then enjoyed as well are the balancing games or rhythm ones, it's using motion, it's pretty well implemented as well, no issues for me, it gives you a direction to point in time to the beat though or maybe your balancing plates as another example. The weakest entries for the games, they typically involved using the Joy-Con as a light gun, it just doesn't have the accuracy required and if anything it led to more random and annoying moments over anything else. 
Finally, for the good in gameplay, opening the game, you can choose your AI's ability. That's going to be easy, medium, or hard, and credit where credit is due. Did get a couple of games in without AI, but for the most part, I was playing alongside them, and they do a decent enough job, even in the two-player experiences. That's really no doubt down to the fact there's very little in the way of teamwork here. Rather, it's more a combined score outside of, let's say, some throwing games and a rowing experience. Problems then for the gameplay, I like the idea of the unlockable characters, but not so much the levels. Pressing the minus button opens a collections menu, it's essentially a free battle pass, but you'll see collectibles in story, that is fine, good idea, but the unlocks, they are aggressive. So I played the story through to the end, achieved level 12, and this thing goes all of the way up to level 50, so already I'm about probably 3-4 hours of gameplay at this point, it was about 4 when I hit level 15. It needs some commitment, that is for sure, and I think many are going to burn out. It definitely would have worked for the characters personally, that was a good choice in fact, but not content, especially when you start to uncover the truth that it's very slight tweaks to make it seem new, do you really want to put in all of that effort to see what is going to be basically the same thing from somewhere else. Controller options then is a big one for me personally. This is a single Joy-Con only game. I'd always prefer to use a Pro Controller. Now I do get it, the majority of these games are motion controlled, but you find that in a Pro Controller, so why not? But I can't even use the Pro Controller on the menus. Alongside that then, this is getting released on Xbox and PlayStation, so why not give us whatever controller scheme they got to and let us choose between them? The four player gameplay then, that is actually local only. That's another big one for me. I just think it would have hugely benefited those adults that enjoy these characters like me. You can feel from the moment you boot it up, it's targeted at families and kids with feel a good messaging like always high five the losing team and make them feel good and it's kind of like no game, I just want to kind of crush their souls. The game then in story packs a load screen every time you load in and out of a mini game. They're very quick as well at times. And I don't know, I feel like they needed some variety in here because you're just staring at that same screen over and over again and that really started to burn me out as well. In story mode as well, in fact, there's these annoying moments that are frequent. You get a question, you choose one of three answers. Somewhat like D&D, but you smash a wheel and you either win or lose. It's completely random, it feels out of place, it is also completely cheap because it can impact your score and you have absolutely no control over it. Finally then, look, it's Ubisoft. They've done some great work on the Switch, no question about it. I've actually loved some of their recent releases, but they need to get over the whole Ubisoft Connect system and logging in. Now look, I honestly don't mind having it in here, honestly, but it's constant pop-ups in this game telling me awards and stats and all sorts. It's just jarring against this colourful game to have this random menu jumping in the top right of the screen. So overall for gameplay, the quality of the minigames, it's decent, honestly. I enjoyed the story mode for what it was as well, but it definitely has some hard to ignore faults. Graphically then, it's a decent looking game this one, especially when you factor in it was released back in 2019 originally. The Rabbids though, they are as charming as ever, and the different character models, decently sized selection, which I do appreciate. There's some fun outfits as well, I would have loved some options though, around maybe cosmetics that I could unlock just to kind of do what I wanted with them. Arenas then, they had a nice variety as well to the gameplay, and it's always nice and crisp, the image, it's easy to make out what is happening, as things often get manic. The menus then are fine, relatively easy to navigate, though a little all over the place at times, especially that battle pass, it's attached to the minus or the plus button. There's different basically buttons leading to different kind of menus and it could have all been just kept in one place. It's all then though topped off with hand drawn light cutscenes for the story, really enjoyed these. It shows how easily these characters can translate across media and not lose their personality. Audio then is fine, relatively repetitive, but there's a few decent music tracks in here. The loading screen, it's got a horrible effect, it really grates that one. And then the Rabbids, they have their usual over-the-top tonal work. Some nice sound effects then kind of round out the audio package alongside a voiceover that does a good job of delivering the narration during that adventure. 
So the final verdict, and realistically, look, my score today, I'm not the target audience for this game. It is a minigame collection designed around a local play featuring everyone's favourite rabbits. That said again, though, it has faults, a lack of controller options, though it's, you know, included on other platforms. There's minigames that either repeat or are extremely repetitive, and then no board layouts or anything else. It's just kind of quickfire offence, and I felt that burnout extremely quickly. Again though, I played solo and credit where credit is due, the AI is definitely good. I still found some bite-sized entertainment in here, and for that first couple or so hours, I was definitely feeling the charm. That said though, we do need to discuss pricing with this one. It's currently way too expensive in my opinion, with a lack of online support and some nasty restrictions around unlocking levels. I don't know, they've made it not only feel kind of like a grind if anything, but put it up there now close to a AAA price point. That means it's sitting next to some of the best, think you know Mario Party or WarioWare. So yeah, I'd definitely be waiting on a price drop personally. I'd also describe it honestly as fine, it's nothing special and nothing too wrong with it, I guess. It kind of does what you expect. It's just kind of adequate, and that's why with a stipulation today, I'm going to be giving it a 5 out of 10. Now that stipulation, if you have those in the house that would maybe want to play local with you pretty frequently, I'd probably bump that to an above average 6. I'd definitely bump it to a 6, so if you do have kids, no doubt they'll love the over-the-top nature of it all, and they probably won't see through those faults quite so quickly. And that is the video down, will you be picking this one up or hoarding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner, it helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.